On November 21st, 1991, there was a nationwide campaign remembered as the Great American Smokeout, which sought to rally support to get smokers to quit. Aaron Lightman, the plaintiff, who claims to be a nationally known anti-smoking advocate, was invited to appear on the WLW Bill Cunningham radio talk show to discuss the harmful effects of smoking and breathing secondary smoke. The plaintiff alleged that while in the radio studio, the co-host, Furman, lit a cigar and, at Cunningham's urging, repeatedly blew smoke in Lightman's face for the purpose of causing physical discomfort humiliation, and distress. Lightman brought an action against defendants, WLW J-Corps Communications, host and co-host, for battery, invasion of privacy, and violation of a Cincinnati, Ohio ordinance. During the hearing, Furman insisted that Lightman knew that smoke would be blown into his face during the program. It was part of the shtick. It was basically theatrical. We staged it. Issue. The issue in this case is whether one can be held liable for battery when one blows smoke into the face of another person. Or more generally, can tobacco smoke be considered offensive contact? Procedural history. The Hamilton County Court of Common Pleas, Ohio, dismissed plaintiff's complaint because of doubt that the plaintiff would prevail. Plaintiff appealed. Rule. The Court of Appeals of Ohio employed a rule from the Supreme Court of Ohio defining offensive contact as contact which is offensive to a reasonable sense of personal dignity. The Supreme Court of Ohio had also held offensive to mean disagreeable or nauseating or painful because of outrage to taste and sensibilities or affronting insultingness. Application the court identified tobacco smoke as particulate matter, thus having the requisite physical properties capable of making contact. Conclusion In regard to the count of battery, the court remanded the case back to the lower court for further proceedings. The court also ruled that the invasion of his privacy and violation of a local non-smoking regulation claims were not sufficient to withstand a motion to dismiss.